I'm going to give a basic overview of Virgin Galactic, talk about Saudi Arabia's $1 billion investment in the company, and what we can expect from Virgin Galactic in the near future. Before we get started, think back to when you were a kid, and how did you imagine the future to be like? In a lot of ways, to me, it feels like we're already living futuristic lives. Resolution in TVs have increased 26 times compared to the standard definition of 20 years ago. There has been rapid advancements in computing and a tremendous leap in video game graphics that has certainly meant what I imagined them to be like in the future when I was a kid. But there are two major advancements that I imagined as a kid that hasn't happened yet. First is having robots in our homes helping us with our everyday lives. And second, having everyday people traveling into space. That's why I'm so pumped about Virgin Galactic who wants to do just that, becoming the world's first commercial space line and send everyday people into space. Does Virgin Galactic look like it's going to be a successful business and kickstart commercial space tourism? Let's find out. Welcome to Neoscribe, research in the future for you so you don't have to. If you're new to my channel, I cover topics such as space exploration, robotics, and all things future. So if you want to know how cool life will be like in the future, then hit the subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss out. Alright, so Virgin Galactic is a space flight company founded in 2004 by billionaire Sir Richard Branson. Virgin Galactic's plan to send people into space involves attaching the space plane VSS Unity to the jet-powered cargo aircraft White Knight 2, which lifts the Unity into its launch altitude at 9.4 miles above Earth. The White Knight 2, WK2 for short, has an incredible 141 foot or 43 meter wingspan with a payload capacity of 37,000 pounds or 17,000 kilograms. Once WK-2 lifts Unity to launch altitude, Unity detaches from WK-2 and launches into space using its own rocket engine. After a brief moment in space, Unity glides back to Earth and then lands on a runway. But this is a lot easier said than done. Virgin Galactic has a long history of delays dating back to 2004 with their initial estimate of commercial flight to take place in 2007 and here we are 10 years later waiting for the first passenger flight. Flight. The next major projection was in 2008 when they planned their first test flight of the Enterprise which was the predecessor to Unity to begin in late 2009 and then commercial service starting in 2011. That projection was not met and the first test flight did not happen until 2010. So by 2012 Virgin Galactic completed 15 test flights of the Enterprise and then Virgin Galactic hit a major milestone in 2013 with the first rocket powered test of the Enterprise. The test included an engine burn of 16 seconds and reached an altitude of 10.4 miles or 16.7 kilometers, which is well short of reaching space, which starts around 62 miles above Earth. The problem is that in order for Virgin Galactic to qualify for the Federal Aviation Administration license to carry passengers, the craft needs to complete test missions at full speed of 2,500 miles an hour or 4,000 kilometers per hour for 70 seconds, and it also needs to reach an altitude of 62 miles or 99 kilometers. Of all three Virgin Galactic's rocket propelled tests of the Enterprise, the fastest speed reached 1,100 miles per hour or 1,770 kilometers per hour for 20 seconds, and the highest altitude they reached was 13 miles above Earth. And that's 49 miles shy of the FAA's requirement. Then in 2014, Virgin Galactic was dealt a major blow when the Enterprise broke up in flight and crashed in the Mojave Desert, killing test pilot Michael Alsbury. So following the crash of the Enterprise, Virgin Galactic replaced the Enterprise with the Unity, which has had several glide tests completed so far. Virgin Galactic hopes that by the end of 2017, they can have the Unity reach the full 62 miles to space. Before that happens though, they need to conduct a powered flight test in the atmosphere, which involves firing Unity's engine for the first time. I'll be on the lookout for news of that. They want to do that by the end of 2017, which which is approaching really fast. But there's a recent twist in Virgin Galactic story. On October 26th of this year, it was reported that Saudi Arabia plans to invest $1 billion in Virgin Galactic. That amount of resources can easily take Virgin Galactic into space, as long as they can execute. To put it in perspective, the total development cost of SpaceX Falcon 9 launch vehicle and Dragon spacecraft was $849 million. So Virgin Galactic has no excuse not to make this work. I truly hope Hope that Virgin Galactic can make it into space in 2018 and start taking tourists into space at some point in the near future. Although I wouldn't be able to afford a trip into space anytime soon, hopefully in 20 to 25 years it'll be affordable for everybody. But it needs to start soon and not another 10 years from now. 
But I want to hear from you. Do you think Saudi Arabia's $1 billion investment will be enough resources to get Virgin Galactic's unity and a space? Comment below. I hope you enjoyed your journey. If you did, please leave a like. And if you're interested in space exploration, robotics, and all things future, then join the Neoscribe tribe and subscribe. I am Neoscribe, and this is the end of our journey.